Togo was old, yes. He was already, I think they were probably already thinking of um, slowing down his responsibility. Um, but Seppala felt like he couldn't do it with any other dog. No other dog had the strength and intelligence and courage to, to, do, that, to the, do that run with him. So it was a really hard decision to, to make. But he thought if he didn't use Togo, neither of them were coming back. Erickson Core, he's so incredible. He's so upbeat, optimistic, passionate, sensitive. He's got a huge experience with um, being outdoors, being in extreme weather. Um, he was a DP, he's got an incredible eye, the way he sees things, the way he lights things. Um, while also he had a wolf for over 10 years. So he's deeply connected to the story of, of man and dog. And I just think I'm so grateful to him for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this story. And um, I think he's really special. It's a huge adventure. I mean, traveling hundreds and hundreds of miles in bitter cold through frozen waterways and tundra and forest and you know, man versus the elements and dog. It's, it's an incredibly adventurous story and, and really scary. And when I was reading it, I was on the edge of my seat, you know, not knowing what's, what's coming next and just hoping that it will all work out. And miraculously, it does. In 1925, dog sledding was transportation. It was uh, delivery for mail and post. It was uh, communication from getting, you know, communication from one place to another. Um, the closest train station to where our story takes place, I think, was like 700 miles away. Um, so you could have some, some of these things happening via the sea if it wasn't frozen, which it was six months out of the year. So people relied very heavily on, on the dog sleds.